Welcome to the Five Rivers Podcast. For more information, head to fiveriverschurch.com. We now join our services already in progress. Good morning. Welcome to Five Rivers this morning. Let's praise and worship His name this morning. tries to roll over my bones when sorrow comes to steal the joy I own when brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken my fear doesn't stand a chance when I has a place to hide I am not a captive to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind and I won't be shaken I won't be shaken my fear doesn't stand a chance when I Standing in your love, oh, 
surrounding me let it rain at your name still call the sea to still the rage in me to still every way at your name jesus jesus you make the darkness tremble jesus
spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathed your life in me you have been so so kind to me and all oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. I felt no worth. You paid it all for me. Yes, you did. You have been so, so kind to me. To the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me. couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God, There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No, no, no. There's no wall you won't kick down, why you won't tear down, coming after me. Come on. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, why you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh. Of God, oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. 
I don't deserve it till you give yourself away. Holy overwhelming, never ending, breathless love of God. Holy overwhelming, never ending, breathless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found. Leaves the 99, I just earn it. I don't deserve it till you give yourself away.
receive that you are good. And I will taste and see that you are good. You're good to me. I will taste. And I will taste and see that you are good. And I will taste and see that you are good. Yeah.
your face we see. Come teach us, Lord. the greater things we have gathered with one thirst hunger we're here to drink of glory wonder here to cry out come and fill this place Fill this place. One single wish, one soul desire to gaze upon your beauty, God. We will.
amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me whoa i once was lost but now i am found a line in one of the songs earlier that states there's no lie I won't tear down I sent out a Facebook post yesterday <clears throat> now I have to try to remember it it said uh, be alert and self-controlled for the enemies within are greater than the enemies without and the enemy tries to get us to think we're worthless, we're useless. Tries to get us to think there's no hope, that the situation is over, we'll never get through this. He has your children, has your parents. Can I tell you today, those are lies. Those are lies. And there is no lie that Jesus won't tear down. Amen. Are you dealing with a lie now of, I'll never get through this. It's hopeless. It's worthless. Come on, let's give it to God. Jesus said there, there's no lie he won't tear down. The enemy comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But he's come that we might have life and have it to the full. Come on, all over this place right now, if you're... If you're struggling with a lie from the enemy, let, give it to Jesus. Let him tear it down. Lord, the lies of depression, the lies of discouragement, the lies of defeat, the lies of distraction, the lies that the enemy would use to steal our joy, our hope, our purpose, our power. We lay them at the foot of the cross right now to the one who is greater. There is no lie that you will not tear down, Lord. So we bring all of the lies that the enemy's feeding us. We give them to you. You are greater in the name of Jesus. Come on, can we give the Lord a clap offering in this place today? Amen. Amen. No lie. Don't, you might have come with one, but you don't have to leave with one today. Amen. Amen. Hey, would you turn to someone and just say, Thanks for coming. We're glad to see you. Glad you're here. You beat the cold weather. It's going to be a great day in the house of the Lord today.
Good morning. I feel like I haven't been here in years. It's only been a week. Well, I hope you have survived the snow, all of this snow. And there is a bus that's going to be taking some people north who want a big snow. So if you'd like to be on that bus, you can meet them out in the foyer. And I am just kidding about that. Welcome, welcome, welcome today. I am so glad that you are here. If this is your first time, we welcome you to Five Rivers and we trust that you will come back. We do have something special for you out in the foyer. If you would stop by the hospitality desk and give us your name and we will be glad to give you a treat. There's a lot of announcements today, so I'm going to just read them. Your 2018 giving statement is ready, so you can pick it up after service today in the foyer. Also in the foyer, um, there are a few of you, I believe, who have not picked up your uh, copy of the proposed constitution and bylaws. So if you have not, I will be at the hospitality desk, and you can pick them up there. Um, we also, I want to announce that we do have our Constitution and Bylaws special business meeting on Sunday, the 27th of January, and that's immediately following the service. So if you are a member, please make sure that you read your copy and that you are here to vote. All of our Wednesday night activities are back in full swing. We are in the conference room if you are an adult with the Bible study in Philippians. Yeah, I had to stop and think. Philippians. Yes, it is Philippians. Um, also, we have the homeless ministry here at Five Rivers the first two weeks of February. So if you would like to help out in any capacity, and there are a lot of ways that you can help, you can sign up in the lobby. Um, is Richard here? I was going to say, because if you have any questions, you can ask him, but he's not here, so don't ask Richard, at least not today. And Pastor wanted to say thank you to all of those who participated in the week of prayer, whether you were here one night or every night, whether you prayed at home, God's going to do great things. If we are unified, if we are believing together for the same things, God will do great and mighty things for us. Last but not least, Brian would like to meet with anyone who is interested in their child participating in the fine arts. It's coming up soon. So if you would like more info, uh, information on that, he will be in the conference room immediately following the service. Yeah, you didn't tell me that. <laughs> it's okay. Grades 6 through 12 are the ones that are involved in this. Anything else? Sure? Okay. God bless. You look better every week. You know that? <laughs> All right. We're going to continue our worship this morning with the Lord's tithes and our offerings unto Him. Come on down, ushers. And it's also Mission Sunday. I had a couple of thank you cards. They've been misplaced from missionaries uh, that just wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you for your faithful support. And I want you to know that when you're faithful with the Lord's tithes and your offerings unto Him, uh, it goes to just do a lot of good. And, of course, we weren't here last Sunday. I would encourage you, our financial responsibilities didn't take a week off. In fact, they increased because we had to have the, the parking lot plowed and salted. So bills actually went up a little bit, so something to keep in mind in the absence. But I want to tell you a story. Uh, this goes back to starting in October. Many of you gave financially and other ways for our uh, family fun fest in October. A couple of weeks ago, the individual or church that was responsible for uh, the meal for the homeless shelter downstairs forgot. So the site supervisor for that night called up G's Pizza and said, Hey, I'm over at uh, Five Rivers Church. I need X amount of pizzas because 
And the lady said, man, that's, that's a lot of pizzas. <laughs> I think he ordered like 15 or something like that. He said, well, we have the homeless people here at Five Rivers Church, and we need to feed them. She said, oh, I've heard about that church. I love you guys. Right? She brought her kids over to the family fun fest, and she said, we just wondered it. So they gave a 15% discount on all of the pizzas to feed the homeless folks that were downstairs that night. Yes, absolutely. So what's the point? When you give and you're faithful with the Lord's tithes and your offerings and you give to missions, we may not hear most of the stories, but you can rest assured it makes a great difference. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask Ewing if he would pray over the tithes and offerings today. Glad you're here. <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. Wow. <laughs> it's a good prayer, good prayer, that's right. Well, how, 2019, off to an okay start for you? It's going to get better? All right. Well, like I told you, you look better every Sunday. So I just can't wait already to see you next week to see how much better that you look than this week. All right. How are those New Year's resolutions going for you, right? Well, that, who remembers the message, resolution smezolution, right? Uh, we <laughs> we want to make uh, divine commitments to the Lord. Well, look at the screen. Today's message is entitled, Treasure Trust. Yep, we're going to talk about money today. So, if this is your first time with us, you can listen in, but uh, for the regular members and adherents... And I'll tell you, some, some pastors don't like to preach about money, but we realize, hey, we are called and committed to preach the full counsel of God's Word. And now, don't be too hard on me. I've been six months here as pastor. I haven't preached on money once. All right? If this is your first Sunday, you can come back next Sunday. As far as I can tell right now, we're not going to preach it. But at the beginning of the year, how about a little challenge on, on our financial resources that the Lord has entrusted us to be good stewards over? What do you say about that? Amen. All right. You know, over the years in pastoring, I've, um, I've found that, that congregants fall on actually both sides. Uh, those who are faithful tithers and givers, they want the pastor to preach more about money. Well, on the flip side of that, it's interesting. Um, those who are not faithful tithers and givers, uh, they they don't want it, they want to hear about it less, maybe not at all, right? That's been my discovery over the years. And you know what I think it is? I think it has to do with conviction and carry. Now, what I mean by conviction is you you preach a message on God's word about it. Well, you know it's God's word. And, and the Holy Spirit goes after you, and you feel convicted. Well, nobody likes to feel convicted, do they? And then you got those that are faithful tithers and, and givers to missions and offerings, and they're like, hey, man, we're carrying this congregation. We need a little help to carry things around here. So I found over the years it's kind of a conviction carry type things. Let's look at our first verse today, very famous tithing verse. You know Malachi chapter 310, I'm sure. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse. Well, today, that's here. That's the church, isn't it? That there may be food in my house, and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. Well, let's consider the opposite, also found in God's Word, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24, one gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. Lord, I pray today that your Word would speak to us and that we would receive your Word in our hearts, in our minds in our will, and in our desires. 
Let it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you've ever read through the Gospels, okay, that's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, talks a lot about Jesus, and if you've read through the Gospels, you've discovered that Jesus is amazing. And Jesus said amazing things. In fact, you've probably, a, a number of times in your life, felt like those who actually heard Jesus speak live. Mark writes about this in Mark chapter 1, verse 22 of his record of the gospel. And here's what he says. He says, and they were amazed at his teaching. For he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. That probably didn't make the scribes feel very good to hear that. But anyhow, to read that, right? Now, if you are one of those astute readers and you're one of those people who keeps track of what you read, then you've discovered that out of all of the things that Jesus had to say, money is one of the things that he talked about most. In fact, did you know that 11 out of the 39 parables talk about money? One out of every seven verses in the Gospel of Luke talk about money. Jesus talked about money more than anything else except the kingdom of God. But here's something we need to understand today. Tithing, now offerings is, but tithing is not about money. It's really about obedience and trust. Now, in regards to the kingdom of God... Uh, it's about trusting your soul to his ability to save. In regards to your finances, it's about you trusting him to fulfill his promises. How many remember the song, Trust and Obey? Oh, my goodness. We used to sing that in church almost every Sunday. Right? You know it. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. You know, now that I'm older, you know, out of my teens. <laughs> now that I'm older, do you know what I've discovered? The only way to be happy in Jesus is to trust and obey. Who wishes you to figure that out 30 years ago? <laughs> right? Me too. No, wait, I'm just out of my teens. How could I figure something out 30 years ago? Now, I believe that the biblical model for tithing is 10%. In fact, the word tithe means tenth or a tenth part. Let's start tracking this through uh, God's Word today. Genesis chapter 28, Moses writes in his first book there, Genesis uh, chapter 28, verses 20 through 22. It says here, then Jacob made a vow, saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go... And will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear. Which, by the way, I think that's key. I'm going to take a little break here. I think people think that, well, if I tithe, well, then I'm going to win the lottery. <laughs> which raises a question, what on earth are you doing playing the lottery? Okay, he's Jehovah Jireh. He meets our needs, not the state of Maryland or Mega Ball or whatever, the Powerball, Mega, whatever. Okay. Um... God's blessings is not limited to just financial resources. He'll take enough food to eat, clothing. How about the blessings of good health, the blessings of a good family? These are, God has unlimited ways in how he can bless you when you're faithful to his word. Okay, then Jacob made a vow, vow saying, If God will be with me and keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear, so that I may come again to my father's house in peace. Then the Lord shall be my God, and this stone which I set up for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give a full tenth to you. Uh, later, as Moses continues his writings in uh, the book of Leviticus, chapter 27, verses 30 and 32, says this, Every tithe of the land whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the trees, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. Listen, tithe, it's not just an obligation. When you're faithful with the Lord's tithe, it's an act of holiness. It is holy to the Lord. 
Last book of the law that Moses writes in Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 22, you shall tithe all the yield of your seed. Now, throughout the Old Testament and well into the time of Jesus, it was unthinkable to come to the house of the Lord without a tithe and offering. But many Christians today want to say that tithing is not mentioned in the New Testament, so it is only an Old Testament covenant responsibility. Okay, but uh, here are some things to consider. The author of Hebrews, which is located in the New Testament, boy, some of you are sharp today. All right. The author of Hebrews, found in the New Testament, in chapter 7 of his writings, he highlights something Abraham did all the way back, and the record of that is in Genesis chapter 14. It, says, it said there, the story is, you know, when Abraham went to rescue his nephew Lot from the enemy, God gave him a great victory. And when Abraham returned, he gave 10% of all of the spoils of victory to Melchizedek, the priest. Well, why is that important? Because this was before the nation of Israel was established. Abram, Abraham did this. It was Abram at the time. But Abraham did this way before God included it in covenant law. Okay? But if you're still stuck on tithing being Old Testament only, then then I think we need to consider something Jesus said. Matthew records it in his record of the gospel, chapter 5, verse 17. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Now, if you are still convinced that tithing is only Old Testament and not New Testament, there is a New Testament model for you. Okay, uh, Mark, he writes about this in Mark chapter 10, the gospel of Mark. So this is the time where a wealthy young leader uh, who has kept, who's kept all of the Ten Commandments since he was just a little guy, since he was a boy, and, and he came to Jesus one day with some questions about how to gain eternal life. And in the course of Jesus' conversation with this guy, in verse 21, it says this, looking at him, Jesus felt love for him and said to him, one thing you lack, go and sell all you possess, not 10%, go and sell all you possess and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Luke writes this in chapter 21, uh, verses 1 through 4 in the Gospel of Luke, G Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the offering box. And he saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins. And he said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for they all contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. We see in Acts chapter 2 verse 45 that the believers sold their possessions and their belongings and distributed the proceeds to all as any had need. Later in Acts in chapter 4 verse 34 it says this, there was not a needy person among them. For as many as were owners of land or houses sold them and brought the proceeds that was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Now, I am yet to meet the person who argues that tithing is only for the Old Testament actually follow the model that we have in the New Testament. All. But to help you with this today, I've got a sign for you. Because what, what did the apostles, people are doing? Man, they're selling their houses, right? And they're bringing the proceeds to the apostles and laying it at the feet. So I've got a sign for you today. <laughs> All right. You don't think tithing's New Testament? You're willing to follow the New Testament model. I'm looking for some takers here. I don't see any hands up. 
Now, you could get Dottie or Phil to help you, but you're going to have to give up your commission if they're going to give all the proceeds, right? <laughs> right? Like I said, I'm yet to meet the person that wants to argue this tithing thing, Old Testament only, actually follow the New Testament model. The Barna Group did a research study on tithing in the church in America. This is heartbreaking. They broke it down into several categories, but the bottom line is, is only in their, in their study, only 9% of adults who claim to be born again tied 10% or more of their income. Are we okay with that here at Five Rivers Church? Listen, beloved, I believe that for the Christ follower, tithing is not an option. Why? There are no loopholes in discipleship. There just aren't any. Listen, I, uh, let's see. Ah, no, I'm not giving you my money. That goes to the Lord. See this? This should be encouraging to you. This is an updated, it says right here, 2019, uh, my credentialing card with the Assemblies of God. I've got to do this. I've got to renew every year. Guess what one of my responsibilities is? Tithing. If I don't, I don't get another card. I don't get another card. See ya. But I lose my credentials. Would you like me to lose my credentials and have to leave you? Okay, just checking. Now, listen. Now, this is not in my notes, but, um, you know, the Scripture doesn't say do this if you're an ordained minister. No, it's, it's, it's a covenant child of God responsibility, isn't it? It's all of us, right? I want to tell you a story. Uh, this happened, uh, who remembers back in 2007, 2008, the, the big financial crisis, the housing bust? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like some of you felt that a little more than others. Well, my family really felt that. Uh, we were pastoring in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania at the time. A lot of people lost jobs. And, oh, my goodness, I don't know if I can remember them all, but I, one couple ended up in Oregon. Uh, our worship leader ended up in um, Colorado. Uh, we had one young man. He was faithful. He ended up in Manchester, England. Uh, one young lady in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, another one up in Syracuse, New York. We lost a lot of people. And guess what? Every one of them were tithers and involved in ministry in the church. We took a huge hit. My wife was the office and finance manager at the church at the time. Well, we took such a huge hit... We hung on as long as we could, but church couldn't afford to continue to pay her salary. So she had to start working for free in the church. So, and I'll never forget this. It's seared in my mind and memory and will be as long as I live. And that we're sitting in our living room. Now, out of my salary, we paid our mortgage and van payment and insurance and utilities and all of those things. It was out of her pay that we fed the family. If you discovered a family of, you know, a, f a few or more, it's, it's expensive. I think at that time it was about $100, $125 a week to feed our family. It's not cheap. And we're sitting there and we had to make the decision. She can no longer, the church can no longer afford to pay her for her work. And, and I'm sitting on one couch and she's over on, on the, on the two-seater there and tears streaming down her face and I'll never forget these words how are we gonna afford to feed the kids now it didn't seem like she was interested about her or me feeding <laughs> now that I think about it I didn't think of that at the time but it just dawned on me all these years later <laughs> how are we gonna afford to feed the children and uh, now that doesn't do a man any good. He wants to provide, right? So that was challenging. But we made a decision, no matter what, we believe God's word, the first fruits of your increase, off the top, gross, not net. It's going it, to gonna, gonna go to where it's supposed to go. 
And I'll be honest with you, we had to keep re-upping on that commitment. Because there was months that if, if I sent my tithes in, I don't know, I didn't have a clue how we were going to pay the mortgage on our home. Had no clue where we were going to get the money for the other bills, the utilities, the, uh, the van payment, the insurance payment. Had no idea. But we stood on God's word. And we made a commitment for several weeks, few months there, I don't know how you're going to do it, Lord, but the ties goes in first. And, and I'm not kidding you, the mail came after we sat there and cried and prayed about an hour and a half later. The, the mail was delivered to our house that day. And there was a card from pastor friends. They'd never sent us a card or mail before. I don't know for sure if they've done it since. Don't remember clearly. And inside that card was a personal check from him and his wife for $100 and a check from the church for $100. That fed the family for the next two weeks. And this just kept happening week after people that had never done this. We had to get our bills down, so we took Verizon up on an offer. And, and, and with that offer, you got a $200 Visa card. And the weeks went by, and the weeks went by, and the weeks went by, and that Visa card didn't come, but somebody would give us a check for $100, and it fed the family for that week. Can you believe the week that no one gave us anything? Guess what showed up in the mail from Verizon? A Visa card for $200 fed the family for another two weeks. Amazing. Went to church one Sunday, a guy hands me a card. He'd never, he had never done it before, and he, he never did it since. And inside the card was a $100 grocery card to Giant Grocery Store. This went on for weeks. I'm going to tell you something. This was, that was, what, 11 years ago now. And the math still doesn't add up. How in the world We made it through that never missed one mortgage payment. Not one. Utilities paid every month. Van payment every month. Insurance every month. Our children never miss. Look at them. All right? They never missed one meal. God says, test me in this. And see if I will not be faithful. I have no clue, 11 years later, how he did it, but he did it. Because he says he will do it, and he's true to what he says. Hear me today, beloved. Tithing is not about the church wanting money from you. Tithing is about you wanting God's best for you. That's what tithing is about. Because God says in his word, you can test me on this. Now, Christianity Today and the Church Law and Tax Group, they also did a research study and published an article a few years ago entitled An Inside Look at Church Attenders Who Tithe. It was written by Melissa Stefan. And she writes in this report, an examination of church attenders who regularly tithe reveals those who actively donate 10% or more of their income tend to fall on the more side. 77% of tithers reported giving between 11 and 20% of their income, and 70% donate based on their gross, not their net income. A lot of people ask, Pastor, do I do tithe on gross or net? Well, do you want his faithfulness, gross or net? Do you want his blessings, gross or net? It's your choice, okay? The majority, 63%, started tithing 10% or more between childhood and their 20s. Moreover, it appears that generous givers are better off financially than their non-tithing counterparts. Nearly one in three Christian tithers reports being debt-free, and the vast majority, 8 in 10, have no outstanding credit card bills. And it's not the case that faithful tithers only give because they have excess income. Instead, the data shows that tithers are distributed almost equally across all income brackets. Tithers also carry outsized importance in a congregation. The study found they comprise only 10 
to 15, or excuse me, 10 to 25 percent of the families in the church, but they often provide 50 to 80 percent of the funding. That's the carry thing that I was talking about earlier. The tithers here, those who are faithful, says, hey, help us. We can do more when you're faithful to the Word of God like we are. Now listen, here's a reminder. Tithing is about trust. Tithers are familiar with another song we used to sing. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take Him at His word just to rest upon his promise and to know thus saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust him more. You see, tithing is an issue of trust in the Lord because it's an instruction from the Lord. We say we trust Him to purchase our salvation and save our souls. We say that we trust He is the Lord God Almighty who spoke the universe into existence. But if we don't tithe, we're in essence saying we don't trust Him to keep His promise. And when we do that, now we discover the evidence that actions speak louder than words. Because if you don't take the Lord at His word, what are you doing? You make a behavioral statement. You make the behavioral statement that I can do more with 100% than the Lord God Almighty can do with 90%. Are you really okay with believing that you can do more with $90 than the Lord God Almighty can? Did I get that backwards? Okay, just read the screen. Are you okay with thinking that you can do more with $100 than the Lord God Almighty who spoke the universe into existence and saved your soul can do with 90 Are you okay with that? See, tithing is about trusting. And I'll tell you this today, beloved. I see where Five Rivers Church is. But I also see where Five Rivers Church can be. And if we're going to get to where we need to be, we need more trusters here. Should I repeat that? Okay. Okay. I see where Five Rivers Church is, but I also see where Five Rivers Church can be. And if we're going to get to be where we need to be and where the Lord would lead us, we need more trusters here. I believe that because I've seen the list. I've checked it twice just to make sure. God always honors those who trust Him and to the degree that they trust Him. And I say this with a little reluctance, but I'm going to do it anyhow. If you're not willing to be a total tither, can I just encourage, take the next step and, and, be, and make a commitment to be a percentage giver. Three, five, seven percent. Here's the thing. Start somewhere and see if God will remain true to His word for you. Do you really think that you are the exception to break God from being faithful to His word? Wow, you got quite an opinion of yourself to think that you're the one that God's going to break faithfulness to His word over. Come on now, we know better than that, don't we? But remember, even as a percentage giver, start somewhere, but remember, your giving is law-bound. You know what the law is? It's the law of the harvest. You reap what you sow. And there's nothing we can do to change that. If any farmers are here, they can tell you. They've never planted corn and harvested apples from the cornfield. 
because you reap what you sow. And that's a principle. It's a law that carries over into every area of life, isn't it? You reap what you sow. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, the point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give what he's decided in his heart to give. Not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. You know, I was faced with a situation with one of my children the other day. I'm not going to tell you who. (laughs) Where they could have helped one of their siblings. Didn't. Imagine that. And I said to this child afterwards, I said, listen, I could have made you do that, but I didn't. Because first of all, dad's not always going to be there. And you're going to have to decide you're going to do the right thing. And I said, I could have made you do this to help, but you could have done it begrudgingly in your heart. And then I just shared with this child of mine, you have to decide. In fact, God's word says you've got to decide what you want to give. And God loves a cheerful giver. That's why I didn't make you do that. And it's one of the reasons I'm not going to get up here week after week and pound you over the head for money. It's only a part of the full counsel of the Word of God. See, ultimately, you've got to decide. What is, is God's Word true? And is God true to His Word? And am I going to trust Him? Am I going to trust Him? Let me ask you today, do you trust Him? We should have done the offering after the message today. <laughs> right? All right, ushers, look, come on, take two, coming up here, right? <laughs> she said, we need to, we weren't here Sunday. Well, listen, tithing's not just a one Sunday thing, right? Do you trust Him with your treasure? That's really the question today. Do you trust Him with your treasure. And of course, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Do you trust Him? Do you trust Him? I'm going to ask you to stand with me today. We'll get you home before it gets too windy and cold later, right? Do you trust Him? You know, I would say to you this morning that uh, our altars are always open for anything you need prayer for. But really, the, the altar call for this message is, uh, comes in the weeks, the months, and the years ahead, doesn't it? Uh, honestly, I, just, I probably did this when I was younger, but I certainly don't do this anymore to preach for response. I, I preach for life transformation. I believe God's Word transforms our lives, puts us on a totally different trajectory in life. That's really what we're after. Uh, There's some things, and I might share some of these at our annual business meeting coming up at the end of February. Remember, next Sunday is a special one. Uh, I do. I, I see where Five Rivers is, but I see where we can be, and, and, and I know what the, the, the Lord's given us responsibility over to help get us there. So once again, these altars are open for anything um, that you may have need of. Someone would be, would be glad to pray for you, but, you know, I don't know where you are. I would say this, if you're faithful with the Lord's tithes and your offerings, thank you so much for your faithfulness. Uh, You help the ministry to continue here, and in terms of outreach and missions, you help us send missionaries around the world to take the gospel to people around the world that will never get to meet on this side of heaven. Thank you for your faithfulness. But if you're here today and you haven't been faithful in this area, I'm not doing my job as a pastor if I don't include this in the full. It's a part of the full counsel of God's Word. So I've got to challenge you in these areas too. Because like I said, tithing is not about the church wanting money from you. It's about you wanting God's best for you. And it's just one of the principles that He operates by. I've seen it. I told you a very personal story. I don't know how He does it, but He does. He's faithful. And I don't want you to miss out on, on that faithfulness. So if you haven't been in the practice, your challenge and your response is going to start 
today or next Sunday and the weeks and the months and the years ahead. Amen? Amen. Um, I'm going to say a prayer over you, and even after I'm praying, and you guys can pick a great song. They were all great today. By the way, aren't you grateful for our worship team? Yeah. Amen. Um, I'm just going to pray a prayer over to, to, to challenge you. Listen, sometimes God's word, God's word encourages, sometimes it comforts, sometimes it convicts, sometimes it does all three at the same time. All right. Lord, I want to thank you for every man, every woman, every individual here, every family that's gathered here today. And I know these are, aren't always the most exciting messages, Lord, but uh, we have a responsibility if we're going to be mature followers of Christ. And our finances is a part of that responsibility because it really has to do with trust in you and trusting your word. So I pray today, Lord, that if there's any here that they're not in the uh, faithful pattern of being good stewards with their resources and tithing and, and giving of offerings and missions and other offerings, I pray that your conviction would fall upon them right now in the name of Jesus, but it would be with the comfort that you've got more for them. That maybe they're missing out on your best for them. God, I'm mindful of the pastor in Philadelphia today that once shared that people or couples are coming in and oftentimes with this trouble and that trouble, he would ask them, do you tithe? And Oftentimes, so many troubles in their lives was traced back to not trusting you in all areas of their lives. I pray, Lord, that we would be encouraged today to be a church full of trusters in you, in Jesus' name. Amen. We got time to a little benediction song here. Don't forget your giving statement for last year. It's out there waiting on you, and if you didn't get a copy of the proposed Constitution and bylaws a couple of weeks ago, that's waiting on you as well. Come on, we got time to sing a song here. Let's do it. If you've never visited us at Five Rivers, we want to invite you to this week's services with ministry for the entire family. For location information, visit us online at fiveriverschurch.com.